All right, so what exactly is the uh, what exactly is the issue here? It okay when I bought it, he told me that it um, started bogging out at full throttle, like at wide open throttle. Uh -huh. So I thought it was running out of fuel, is what it kind of sounded like to me. But okay. then when I took it out, it had a miss, a like miss. the whole time. Yeah, it wasn't so just bogging you, out. So you can feel it. Yeah, you can feel a miss. Okay. All right, so right now the the symptoms, what you're telling me is it, it's just missing. Yes. So there's no bogging, it's just missing. Yeah, it's okay. just missing. All right, you can go ahead and lower it. There, it sits a little higher in the front. <laughs> oh, no, it's no problem. All right, so you got a 1996, looks like what, a four-cylinder? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that thing is glued on there. <laughs> Doesn't want to come off. All right. Let's hop to it here. So we got uh, CDI Electronics, four coil per cylinder. High speed miss. Now, is, is the high, is is the miss prevalent when you run it on the muffs or anything like that? Um, when I first got it. I ran it and it seemed really responsive because it'll start, it'll fire right up. Right, okay. Um, It seemed real responsive to idle on the muffs. But then, I don't know if it fouled a plug or what, but it started being kind of sluggish. So I put new plugs in it. Okay. Again. And, um, Again? <laughs> yeah. Okay. And um, it's running better, but it's still not... So the miss is an actual like you're you're cruising. You just yeah. From the time you take off, it's like burr, 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 like you can you can just yeah. Okay, so it's almost like you're not getting spark on one of the cylinders. Exactly. Okay. All right. Well. And if I was to guess, I would say like number two maybe because that's the one that. Okay. Um, well, let's not guess. Let's uh let's let, let's test them all. Okay. okay. That's what we're gonna do. All right, so the power head was uh, rebuilt. The carbs have been rebuilt. The carbs look really, really clean. Uh, let me see if I can zoom in here. Oh. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but yeah, he did a real good job cleaning, cleaning those carburetors. That's for sure. All right, so we're just gonna perform a simple spark test. Um, I'm just gonna hook up and just Spin it over. Is there fuel connected to it now or no? No. Okay. Right. But there is fuel on the carburetors. Okay, so it might it might pick. Okay, gotcha. All right, so we're doing a spark test. It might fire. There's, there's no fuel connected, but uh, there's fuel on the carburetor, so I'm told. So. Let's see. I definitely hear it. Better angle on this here. There we go. There we go. Yeah, yeah, spark on, spark on both. Yeah. Okay, so now we're on the bottom two cylinders here. see it on video but there's spark on all four cylinders before we go delving into the electronics uh, a lot of things a lot of different things can cause a, a miss it could be a rectifier it could be the alternator it could be the switch box a bad coil or a low low cylinder so we're going to check the compression first before we proceed getting into the heavy duty stuff <laughs> Backing it up. We're gonna run on the muffs. I'm gonna see if uh, see if I can hear this 
clear this mess. All right, so we got her backed up. Uh, I got my Quicksilver muffs on there. Um, the throttle arm disconnected. I really want to hear this engine. I want to. I want to hear this. This miss. So we're gonna go ahead and fire it up and make it talk. So I didn't really hear hear a solid miss unless I'm you know. So first step uh, with CDI electronics at least you are to disconnect the uh, rectifier and if the miss goes away then that should solve the problem. But I didn't hear a miss, so um, the, the, yeah, obviously the boat's not under load, so. So we're gonna test the voltage going to each coil. And we're gonna be looking for uh, any drops or spikes or anything like that. We just wanna make sure that the voltage is, is even going to all coils. Put this up here. It's real easy to read. Uh, not much easier. Let's keep it there. Okay. Can you hold this? Sure. Am I? Disconnect my switch because you want to connect. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I can't start it. There's no key in it. Yeah, it don't work too well without ignition.
All right, so we just did a DVA on it, and uh, each coil at idle is getting 250 volts pretty evenly. I don't, I don't see any discrepancies uh, with the voltage, so I, I, I'm not really hearing a miss. Um, I'm not really sure what else to test. Yeah, I know. That's what. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> it's weird. That's why I was wondering if my we could test to do the, with the ignition switch or something. If, no, it's not the it's not the switch. Cause that's the only thing that's different. I mean, what I would I would I would disconnect the uh, the, the the rectifier and see if that solves the issue on the water. But of course, it has to be under load for that. Um, now we could test the trigger yeah. since we're here. Okay. Uh, but right now it looks like the switch box and the alternator are doing what they're supposed to be doing that's putting out the voltage uh to the coils consistent voltage you know you don't see like 250 and then 200 and, you know what i mean like yeah. it, it is consistent consistent voltage so uh yeah we'll go ahead and test the trigger um since we're here we'll just do a, re a quick resistance test and see what that uh see what that tells us next we're going to disconnect the trigger wire we're just going to test the trigger out it looks like the stator the stator in the switch box is doing what they're supposed to be doing consistent uh, voltage here so I'm going to disconnect the uh, trigger wires which are really hard to distinguish they all look brown to me except for this black one at the bottom but the top one should be violet I'm probably, I'm probably gonna have to mark these so I don't get them mixed up so violet white uh, white and violet, white and brown maybe all right let's do it okay so I actually labeled the labeled the uh i can't see i put one, one two three four just so i wouldn't mix them up because they all look brown to me but the first test is purple to white which believe it or not that is actually supposed to be purple and then this is the white and you're looking for eight eight hundred to fourteen hundred which that looks spot on so the next test is brown brown to black so we'll do that next all right so now we got the uh the brown to brown to black and the reading again right spot on so no discrepancy there. Right, so the next test we're going to do is just uh, each wire, we're, we're going to run them into the ground. I have my own meter grounded here. So the first one, violet, nothing, which is correct. Number two, which is white, uh, white I believe. <laughs> nothing, and good. Okay, and this one is the brown wire, nothing, which is good. Now the black wire, or the black and white wire, whichever one in your scenario, nothing. All right, so the, all right, so from what I can see, the trigger is good. The alternator is doing its job by supplying a switch box, and we're getting 250 volts even to all four four coils, um, the cylinders. So well, I'll, I'll ask you, the, it's a healthy engine. Now, of course, we have to get it on the water. Um, a faulty rectifier can cause a miss. So what I recommend is actually disconnecting the yellow see them the yellow wires right here and try running it and then uh, not under load and then if the mist mist stops then this needs to be replaced but as far as all the electrical components uh, from what I can see is this is a, is a prime healthy very healthy engine so and that's uh, that's what I got